looking good. Lots going on out here. Uh, but I want, today I want to talk about like, out of all the aquariums that we're bringing to this aquarium gallery, what's going to be the most difficult to move and the most to consider and what am I gonna do about it? My 700 gallon aquarium with my Asian arowana and three of my black diamond stingrays. There's also a bicer in there. And my 375 gallon salt water aquarium. But why is that a problem? And uh, well, what's the plan? Oh, also, what's this pool for? <laughs> More on that in a minute. Now empty, the 700 gallon weighs like a thousand pounds. Obviously it's not gonna be easy to move, but it's been done before. Is it up on it? Oh. Once again, I'm just gonna need a small army to help me. Now the 375 gallon is also a hard tank to move, but technically I built it and put it on its original standalone. And I have no clue how I was able to do that because man, this thing's heavy. It's gonna need at least four people. Which reminds me, I'm probably going to ask for help moving that big tank here eventually. I know many of you guys showed up to help me move it in the first place and a lot of you guys enjoyed being a part of that. So if you're not following me on Instagram, make sure you do because I'll most likely ask on there for help and I'll send, I'll put a date, all that stuff. Anyways, back to the actual topic. Now, if you were to ask me, what's the perfect size tank for an Asian arowana? Well, when you're keeping these big fish, a lot of the times it comes down to the length as well as the width of the tank. For uh, stingrays, I would go a minimum of eight feet long by four feet wide. Height doesn't really matter. Three feet is okay for a pair, depending on the species, but we're talking about the Asian arowana. The perfect tank size for a single Asian arowana, unfortunately, they need it. Um, he's several years old, but you know, it's tough to justify this for a tiny little fish. However, he needs a tank that's at least eight feet long, three feet front to back, and two feet tall. You needy little bugger but I do have a tank with those dimensions. The 375 gallon has those dimensions because if you remember, I specifically built this for stingrays and Asian arowana. Which is why I said I was separating them in the first place. The rays are going to get their own tank and so is the arowana. However, if you remember, I want the rays to act a lot more normal and be uh, you know, a little more comfortable in the tank. Stingrays have the uh, habit of swimming up the sides of the tank. Mine don't because the arowana won't allow him. I'd also like to get them into um, breeding and you know, just doing a lot better and being more like rays. And I think the only way we're gonna do that is to move this guy. What that means is once that 375 gallon is empty, I could move it into place, get it completely set up and running. And then I could move the Asian arowana from the 700 gallon and have a seamless transition. And I know what you're thinking. But what happens to the saltwater tank? It's such a cool aquarium. The new aquarium gallery has to have salt. So what I'm thinking is splitting the tank up into either a pair of 180 gallon tanks or like a 180 gallon tank and a couple of 120s. Uh, and in the meantime, I'll move everything from the 375 because we got to move it. Again, the lights just came on so the, a lot of the coral's not out right now. But anyways, uh, we'll move everything to like a spare 120 gallon tank like Kevin's in. Now, believe it or not, the most difficult fish to move in the aquarium gallery is actually not the stingrays. You would think that they would attack me and whatnot, but they are actually pretty basic to move from tank to tank. They don't really cause damage to themselves. They don't thrash around too much. I've never been hurt or they've never been hurt in all of my years of keeping fresh water race. The single most difficult fish to move in the aquarium gallery, oh, we gotta go back. is the Asian arowana. I bet you thought it was gonna be the piranhas or something. This guy is two feet long, he's incredibly powerful. He's not only going to potentially hurt me, which I'm honestly not worried about. If he hurts me, it's, I deserved it. But what I'm worried about is him losing scales, tearing his fins, ripping out his barbells, you know, damaging himself in one way or the other. And that is incredibly common with Asian arowana when you attempt to move them. I mean, they're already constantly jumping and hurting themselves. As for the rays, and that's where the pool comes into play. Now here's the plan. We fill this up, bring it up to temperature, treat it, make sure it's safe for the rays themselves. Once the Asian arowana is moved out of the 700 gallon, I can take the filtration off that 700, put it right on here and move the rays over for another seamless transition, allowing me to truly focus on acclimating them properly and getting them in. Instead of like running around, I'm moving, I'm trying to move the 700, the rays are in, you know, totes, et cetera, et cetera. This just, takes the stress off of the rays as well as me. 
and that means we don't have to rush anything and when you rush things a lot of the times you can make mistakes ultimately end up just stressing the fish and potentially putting their lives in danger and once the rays are in their 700 gallon i simply drain the pool uh, fold it up put it away store it for an emergency if anything were to ever happen i do have a relatively large 10 foot diameter pool that i can move big fish to if i have to but we're gonna have to pick up the pace here because that pool is in the reptile room so that's the game plan with my biggest fish and my most beloved fish, to be honest with you, the arowana and the stingray. You guys know that uh, for the majority of my channel, that's pretty much exclusively what I kept besides discus. And, you know, I was breeding some rays, breeding discus, you know, kept Asian arowana. And these are my biggest concern and uh, my biggest passion. However, once being moved, I would estimate that within, uh, you know, just a few months, the rays will be breeding. As for this gorgeous fella, He'll be in his own tank, absolutely mesmerizing visitors in the exact same way that he did for me. But absolutely none of this would be possible without you guys. You guys watching the videos, hitting the like button, commenting and helping me that way. Or for those that want to get my merch, the link is in the description, or buy my book or become a member of the channel so you can see everything first, etc. All of that, no matter what you do, even if you're just a viewer, yeah, Again, it, this literally 1 million percent would not be possible without you. Also, sometimes you guys are right and uh, I make changes in the gallery without making a video about it because I'm stubborn and I want to be right, but you guys were right about this. I'll sh I will show you other things you guys are right. If this video gets like 20,000 likes, if you blow this video up, I'll, I'll show you some other things that have changed because of you guys and the impact you guys have in the comments that actually have an impact out here. Let me show you the first. Okay, first and foremost, just a couple of things I was building on. Remember the platform I said I was gonna build out of four by fours? It is there and it is in place now. I'm not entirely sure I trust it. Uh, you know, I think I'm gonna have to do some testing and whatnot, some stress testing. Maybe I'll build a replica or something. I'd rather have these crash outside than up here, but um, ultimately, uh, I stored those down there. These are the water toes for water changes. I'd love to get them up there. I tried to put them up myself and it's just too dangerous, um, but we'll figure that out. Anyways, got that done. Something else that you might notice, I'll just give it a second, see if you guys say anything or notice anything. With the first aquariums that you walk in. Oh, this one's here now. Ow. Oh yeah, I have a drone. <laughs> I've had it for like four years and I was flying it in here earlier. <laughs> Maybe we should use it in uh, videos here in the near future. It'd be nice to get a bird's eye view type of deal. Anyways. The tanks, there used to be five along this wall, and there's so much concern about how much room is in between each tank. Uh, previously, there was like 38 inches. That's the identical width in between the uh, 2,000 gallon as well as uh, the 120s that I have at home. Instead, we now have uh, a little over five feet of distance in between each. We just had to take one of the tanks out, which is fine. Um, because I realized I wanted to do this. You guys wanted me to do this as well, but I realized I wanted to do this because the studs in the walls don't necessarily land, line up with the stand placement. And when I was checking out where the studs are, because I'm mounting lights to the ceiling to light these, like, look what I'm doing here. Um, this is just some, uh, brackets. Here's a, a beginning one. This still needs to be routed, painted. It'll look nice once I'm done, but I'm going to do hanging lights over every tank which will free up everything. I think it's gonna look good as well. It needs to be shortened and stuff. I, again, it was just a test run. I was basically um, putting weights on the end here and seeing how much it could hold up, but that's a video for another day. Uh, yeah, I think that now it, it does look a lot better. I think it is way better. Downside is, is that, you know, the focus can't be on jamming to every aquarium possible out here. We, we gotta have meaningful tanks, but what I'm thinking is, um, is I'm still going to do 120s right along here because it's like almost five feet in between them still. And then maybe a 120 in the, or I'm sorry, 180s. These are 180 gallons. Then 180 gallon in the center and 120s on either side. Make them all salt water. But yeah, everything's coming together a little slowly. Lots of things upstairs are happening. Um, and uh, yeah, I got to get moving though. I got to move a lot faster, get a lot more done. You know, maybe I get these, the rest of the stands built this, uh, this week, but we'll see how everything progresses. Anyways, that's today's video, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, what am I doing today? I'm going to finish mounting the lights. I'll finish testing and I'll figure that out. And uh, probably, 
um, go get the rest of the wood to build stands, maybe cut it up, get those done. I think once we have um, 10 of the 180 gallon stands out here, we'll get a really good idea of the layout, but I also need to build the 375 gallon stand or we're never gonna be able to move it or start this whole progression of why I'm making this video in the first place. 375's gotta be made out of two by sixes and I'm pretty sure they're about three to $400 a board <laughs> right now. Wood is so expensive, I never thought I'd see the day. Oh, and another thing that I'm gonna do. Okay, see this wall right here? So what I'm thinking about doing, and you guys have seen me do this a number of times, is I've built 3D backgrounds myself uh, out of styrofoam, for example. I've done styrofoam, uh, I've done uh, fiberglass, concrete, you name it. I've done darn near everything that you could possibly imagine building. But anyways, I'm gonna get four by eight sheets of styrofoam and tape them or glue them to the wall here, right? Uh, make sure like it's an inch thick or something. And then I'm going to carve it all into rock, make this entire wall look like a rock wall. And then maybe we do it against this wall or that wall, something like that. Let me know what you guys think. I'm asking you this because I know that you probably have a better idea than me, case in point. Also, I want to make some, one thing abundantly clear. I never want to hear it again that uh, I was wrong and you were right. Do not rub that in my face. I'll see you guys in the next video.